All right, guys, welcome to our four-part series in software testing. And in this first part, we're going to be talking about functional testing. That's the kind of testing you want to do to make sure all the basic functions of your application or website work as intended. So let's take it away. Let me explain. Here it goes. A is for ambition. B, what I want to be. C, past the situation that's in front of me. Doubt is an enemy. We say okay, so welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about testing. Now, a lot of people out there are building applications and you want to make sure your application is going to work, it's reliable, it's scalable, and it's not going to break down under pressure. So I'm here with David. Now, he's an expert development consultant that comes into a lot of development teams and helps them fix a lot of these issues. Welcome, David. Hey, hey. First off, I mean, I think, David, one of the most basic and fundamental testing things people you want to do is, is just basic functional and manual automated tests. So that is making sure the basic functions of your application or app work properly. Now that's often just with a human tester, just going through the program, making sure there's no bugs, physically testing it. And then sometimes they can script these tests that they're doing manually into a sort of um, scripted uh, test that goes through a bunch of inputs and has an expected output and can be run more quickly than a manual tester doing the same job. Yeah, I guess there's two kind of, um, there's two kind of broad approaches that, that manual testing falls into. It's normally where people start because this is the truism that if you, if you want your software to not fail in production, you should test it. And I know that sounds like a really, really obvious thing, but code that isn't tested fails for the first time in production. And you should, truth. you shouldn't just rely on your developers and your own team saying that they've tested it. You should look for maybe a sort of separate specialized tester or someone who's dedicated to that job to do that. I guess it, I guess it depends on the kind of software and what they're looking for. So some manual testers frame testing from what they call exploratory testing. So they are the, the, the chaos monkeys, the, to, to steal something that I think Netflix coined at some point, they go and they click things a hundred times, or they will try and pull the cable out the back of your server while they're doing something, or they will, they'll try and be really, really disruptive in unpredictable ways. So that kind of um, exploratory testing is very, very valuable and can never really be replicated by machines. Um, the other kind of manual QA often is release teams that sit on checkpoints between gated deployments. So these people kind of look at new pieces of functionality in software and try and exercise it in the way a user would, but they're more script based. So I tend to find the second group of people are the people that tend to encounter automated testing first as they will start to script the things that they're doing because they notice with, that with the growth of any software, the bigger the software gets, the larger their burden becomes and ultimately it becomes unsustainable. Yeah. Uh, we would also include like operating system testing. So testing different operating systems on a web page or maybe testing an app with different versions. I don't know. I know Android software has a whole different number of hardware you can test the software with. Yes, certainly with traditional, um, well, I mean, desktop s software would have operating system variants, web applications. For the longest time, obviously, browser fragmentation was a problem. We're now basically living in a world where everyone's running Chrome or some variant of Chrome. Sorry, Firefox users or 10 of you. I, I joke, I joke. Firefox is amazing and has to exist, but everybody is using Chromium, so web compatibility is better now. But the, these, I mean, these still exist. The, I mean, these, the, the differences definitely still exist. Naturally, mobile phones have an even broader problem because it's not only the fact that they're using different versions of software, actually, the physical hardware is different. So if you've got for instance, um, features of your application that rely on device capabilities of specific phones, uh, whether the built-in version of WebView on the built-in version of Android, for instance, is up to date. And that stuff is often tied to operating system versions. You get a lot of complex nuance. So, I mean, I find that as, as the years go on, um, the power of a, a human testing team as opposed to just automated tests involves adding that extra piece of tactical thought around it. Like it isn't just, hey, can we click this button a hundred times? Yes, I can also make a computer do that. But actually it's, and what do we support? And what is our, what is our supported device matrix? What counts as a failure? How degraded do we allow our software to be on various 
perceivedly legacy versions of browsers or hardware. There's a lot of kind of human nuance in, in testing with humans, I suppose. Yeah, I always find a human can break something in a way you just didn't expect them to, you know? Yeah, humans are terrors. True, true terrors.